In this video, we will be replacing the brakes in this 1972 C520 forklift. To prep for this repair, I have blocks behind the rear tires. I have the front of the forklift raised and supported with a series of wooden blocks. Additionally, I have removed both of the forks and supported the front end with a length of lumber. And we will begin by removing the one inch lugs from the wheel. And we can work that wheel off. Taking a look at our wheel hub assembly, we can identify our bleed screw location, followed by our brake line coming into that braking assembly. And taking a little closer look, we can see our brake line with our banjo bolt, as well as our bleed screw. We also have four 3 fourths inch bolts that are visible from the outside. These will need to be removed. From the front side, if we take a look around to the back side, we can see four additional nuts that need to be removed. If we take a look underneath on the back side, we can see three nuts, one of which we previously saw in the previous video clip. But two of these need to be accessed from underneath. These are all 3 fourth inch in size. Now, depending how old and crusty your system is, you could attempt to remove the brake line or you could remove the banjo bolt. For this, we're going to see if we can just remove the banjo bolt and see where that gets us. A tubing wrench is not able to be fit in here, so we will be using the open end of a 9 16 combination wrench with a little bit of persuasion. And as we loosen that up, we can work that off of the fitting. There will be a brass washer on the back side that might fall off. You do not want to lose that. The four bolts on the front side can be removed with a three quarter inch impact. With the four bolts removed from the front side, and the six nuts removed from the back side, we can work this assembly off. And you do want to be aware that this will dump a bunch of transmission fluid onto the floor. To get a clear idea of what we are looking at, we have our 10 bolt and nut locations. We have our center most point, which goes into our transmission. We have our brake line that we removed out of the way. And we will do a little cleanup on the inside of this before we get too far. Using some Amsoil brake and parts cleaner, as well as a scraper, I can clean off as much of the debris as I can and come back with a rag to get the rest. And with that cleaned up, we're looking a little better. And taking a look at our assembly, we want to focus our attention on the back. This portion has the brake drum. And taking a look at the drum, we have a snap ring that needs to be removed. We then need to work the drum off of the assembly. To do this, I will be using two pry bars, one on each side, and gently 
working that off the brake shoes. This particular unit does not have a method of adjusting those brake shoes in. So we will need to use a little bit of persuasion to get that off. As we take a look, we can see that the wheel cylinder is showing some damage, as well as a substantial amount of debris in the brake housing. It may be necessary to surface the inside of the drum. For this repair, we will not be doing that. The inside still looks very good and this is a low use forklift. To identify some of the components, we have the anchor block, which the shoes are anchored in. We have our guide pin, our guide pin spring, and our retainer caps. We also have our brake shoe return springs. We have two of those and of course our brake shoes. Those brake shoes are tied into the wheel cylinder and we can see that this wheel cylinder is showing some damage. We're going to begin by removing the upper return spring. This is the one closest to the wheel cylinder. We're then going to work the upper spring retainer caps off of the guide pins. And that top spring is on there pretty tight, so we will see if we can work the pads around just a little bit here. You can see that this pad is completely separated from the backing plate. There we go. And with those springs off, we should be able to work off our pads. And to remove our two guide pins and the wheel cylinder, we have four bolts that need to be removed that will release our backing plate. and we should be able to work off that backing plate. Now we are going to make note of the small spring holding the dust plate in place. This spring goes around the bleed screw and applies just a little bit of pressure to hold that plate down. and we can remove those pins. And if we flip our backing plate over, we can see the rest of that spring, which that spring has obviously broke. We can see our bleed screw. We can also see our two bolts holding that wheel cylinder in place.
for reassembly, we're going to begin by installing our new wheel cylinder and the two bolts that hold that in. At this point, I'm going to add that spring around the bleed screw. I'm also going to add my guide pins and that dust shield. Taking a look at the anchor block, we do want to double check that both of the anchor keys are installed. There's one on each side and our new shoes will be installed. So the little moon shape part will fit into that anchor key. Next come the retainer springs and caps. We can then install the return springs. Now these springs are probably the hardest part of this job and can be a little bit frustrating. After those return springs have been installed, we can install our drum. Now we did not resurface the drum so we do have a lip inside the drum that we are working with. We can install our snap ring and then that assembly can go back on the forklift. And prior to installing this on our forklift, we do want to rotate the hub and make sure that nothing is binding or sticking. We should feel a very light drag from the new pads. Everything's looking good with this one, so we can install it back on our equipment. And it might be necessary to slightly rotate the opposite side to help that sink in correctly. With our bolts tight and secured, we can remove the dust boot for our banjo bolt. Now I'm going to make sure to reinstall the brass washer onto the back side of that banjo bolt. This will help this seal properly. And using my open end wrench, tighten that down. Next comes topping off the brake fluid reservoir with new clean brake fluid. We're going to fill the reservoir all the way to the top and then we're going to proceed with our brake bleed procedure. 
For this, I will be using a brake bleed tool to assist in removing all of the air from the braking system. Now you do want to top off the brake fluid reservoir during this process. And once this process has been completed, you want to reassemble everything back together. And don't forget to top off the transmission fluid prior to doing our test run with our equipment.